So as first shut down, we can come in and talk about transfer or speech process and sense Hi everyone, my name is Kang Jun. I'm happy to give a short talk here. And uh, I'm from uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital in the United States. And my major is biomedical informatics. This project is uh, under the collaboration of the Dr. Jian Shu and Dr. Bruce Arnold, who is my primary mentor. And today I'm going to talk about uh, transfer learning of cell segmentation and annotation for spatial omics data. And uh, this is some background. So. As we know, there are a lot of new technologies emerging for spatial omics. For example, on the top one, this is based on next generation sequencing. And uh, currently, their resolution is relatively low compared to the technologies below. And uh, right now, people still require like computational pipelines to do deconvolution to get the uh, cell components within each spot. Uh, there may be some newer technologies that can reach near single cell resolution, but most of them are still relatively low resolution. And uh, another type of technology is either in situ sequencing or in situ hybridization. And for this type of method, usually people can reach sub serial resolution, and you can see the spatial uh, distribution of either uh, transcript or proteins. And uh, in addition, they also stain like DAPI and uh, NISO to look at the location of nuclei and the uh, cytoplasma. And this can be used for segmentation because we don't have the ground truth for the cell borders. So in this technology, segmentation is usually required to better help us do following like single cell analysis based on the uh, spatial coordinate. And uh, this is actually a table from a review paper where you can see maybe a little small, but a lot of new technologies coming up uh, in the last few years. And uh, most, um, like most of them are relatively low resolution, but some of them based on like in situ hybridization or sequencing can reach sub serial resolution like MERFish, SIGFish, or other technologies like Starman. And in addition, like new technologies like uh, SlideSeq version two or SlideTag can reach near single cell resolution. Today, I'm mainly focused on the uh, sub server resolution uh, spatial data where we need segmentation to do the downstream analysis. And uh, I want to mention like segmentation, although this is a very like traditional task, but still very challenging in current spatial data, especially single cell resolution spatial data. And uh, this is actually a mouse cortex Murphy's data. And uh, this is actually their original segmentation. Different colors means uh, different cell types assigned by the authors. And uh, the gray dots are actually the dot they regard as background or noise. And you can see actually there are some cells they were not correctly segmented and uh, they were regarded as uh, background noise or uh, unsegmented dots. And in addition, you can see there are some cells uh, the authors only get part of it as this cell, but uh, actually it's too conservative, probably because they use DAPI and watershed to just segment the nuclear part of the cell. So the dot covered in this mask, segmentation mask, only belongs to the, probably only belongs to the nuclear part. So there are a lot of issues like that, like this. So for example, in this data set, more than 50% of the spots were not uh, annotate as cells. So that's a big loss of the information. And uh, people may ask like, if we have more modalities of images, like if we not only stain the nuclear part, but also stain the other part like cell body, we may be able to better segment, uh, segment the cells using other technologies like uh, cell pose, which is popularly used nowadays. Uh, and here is an example that I showed on a data set from Nanostream. It's a lung, non-small cell lung cancer. And here I classify the dots. Each dot is actually a transcript. I classify them in two types. One is uh, non-DAPI, which means the DAPI information is not like captured. There's no DAPI signal under or behind this dot. And the blue dots are actually the dot 
of transcript, which you can also capture the back image. And here I show four uh, windows. You can see if we zoom in, sorry, this is a little small, but you can see a, a lot of red dots here. Actually, they form or they come from a cell, but they, they don't have the DAPI image, which is in grayscale here. And uh, same for other windows here. Um, part of the reason is that because those staining are actually only capture several Z stacks. And if the Z stack happen to skip the nuclear part, you don't have the DAPI image for that stack or that slice. And uh, another reason is that um, the trans transcript not only come from nuclei, it can also come from the cytoplasma. And uh, it's po very possible that the surrounding spot doesn't have uh, signals uh, stained by DAPI image or other images. And uh, that's caused a big loss of information if we only consider the image information. Here is an, another example coming from the mouse ileum. And with that uh, limitations of, of images, we were thinking like, for this data, we not only have the depth imaging or staining imaging, we also have the spots that are like uh, stained using the single cell spatial technology. And that can be very high throughput because, for example, currently the merfish or sickfish data can reach thousands of genes based on their probe design. So this is actually very rich information that can be used additionally for our segmentation. So uh, here is some um, background that here is some like um, proof of concept experiment that we did. So what we did is actually look at the neighborhood of genes that uh, can be projected onto the same slice. And we assume that neighboring genes have similar cell types and the labels. And this is the uh, plot that we draw. If the dot, if two dot, their distance get further away, you can see the probability of their labels being from the same cell or same cell type uh, decrease. And here is another image that we draw. Like we just use the neighboring gene, compo gene component to do class, like similar to single cell clustering. And you can see the annotations that we assign to the, to the component can also represent the annotations that derive from uh, the single cell analysis. And their labels are actually like very similar to the single cell labels. And uh, with that, we draw a model called burrowing. And this is the overview of the model. So uh, on the left, you can see like how those dots uh, distribute on 2D uh, spatial coordinate for, uh, in each cell. And different colors means different genes. And you can see there are noise outside of the cell. And uh, each dot within the cell can be either uh, an RNA or protein, depending on the technology. And for this model, we, we just uh, come up with two tasks. One task is first, we want to build a co. Uh, let me open the laser pointer. So the task first is to build a like co-localization graph where like neighboring genes were like connected with edges and those edges connect into a graph. And with that graph, we build a graph convolutional neural network to predict the cell types. So here on the left, different colors means different cell types. And we want to predict which cell type those dots or those transcripts were coming from. And in this task, we didn't do segmentation. Uh, for this task, we learned node embeddings for each transcript, which could be like uh, tens of dimensions. And we observe actually if we transfer the node dimensions that we learned for the task of uh, cell classification, uh, those embedding can be um, concatenated with other embeddings like image embeddings or distance kernels to build a like embedding for edges. Those edge embeddings can be used for prediction of those edges, uh, indicating whether two dots that the edge connect coming from the same cell or different cells. And those edge labels can be used for community uh, detection. And then we can do clustering based on the graph and uh, get the uh, segmentation from those um, 
community detection algorithms. And this is how we do the, how we do the uh, segmentation for this task. Um, this is the model overview, and we do benchmark. So first, we look at our accuracy to predict foreground and the background dots, and compared with other methods like one shell, cell pulse, or other uh, newer methods, our method achieve higher accuracy. And in the meanwhile, we also look at adjusted mutual information to look at original cells that are defined in, in the paper and our predicted cells and our method get higher uh, adjusted mutual information indicating uh, higher performance in segmenting cells. And this is the result uh, that we show for the raw annotations for the cells. You can see this is the annotations given by the authors of the paper. And uh, I also run other benchmark methods like workshed and cell post. You can see their um, cell annotations or cell border are not um, similar to the original paper. Like workshed and cell post may be too conservative and other methods may have larger border of the cells compared to the original uh, annotations. And uh, this is our method which kind of uh, assemble the similar result as the raw annotations given by the authors of the paper. And we also uh, do a survey about the probability of the model. We want to see whether we can train a model from one data set and apply it for other data set. So here is an example of Murphy's cort mouse cortex. We pre-train a model from here and then apply it to another like newer data set, which is also a uh, mouse cortex, but there are like there might be some batch effect or like difference between the data set. And uh, we first just uh, chain a model in the first data set and uh, directly uh, predict the labels in the second data set. And you can see um, there are a lot of gray dots, which means their annotations were not predicted. They were predicted as background. But if we fine tune the data set, um, by transfer learning and finding the parameters in the new data set, more cells can be pre predicted with the corresponding cell annotation. Uh, with that, I want to wrap up mm, my presentation. So I want to uh, say that segmentation currently is still a very challenging problem and uh, only using the staining or imaging information is not sufficient for border detection. And we design a graph a convolutional neural network to simultaneously do segmentation and predict cell labels. And uh, it outperforms other available methods. And uh, we can transfer our models with a fine-tuned parameter for the new data set. So we can learn something from other data set to the new data set, which can help us uh, adopt our models to other technologies as well. So with that, I want to thank everyone. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions. I think we'll only make sure we move on to the next uh, short talk. Uh, of course, there's a. Uh, you can chat with us.